How will markets do and your investments in a deflationary economy? <laughs> it's a tough one, man. We have literally no recent experience of this whatsoever. None of us alive today has any experience uh, dealing with a deflationary economy. None whatsoever in terms of any you know, sus sustainable time frame. Uh, people going back to the Great Depression do, but the Great Depression was in the 1930s. We're talking 90 years old. I'm sure there are some people still around. They weren't investing then. I'm their kids. So I feel very safe to say there is no one here in America today who has ever witnessed as an investor a deflationary economy. So I was reading this article from uh, Joe Thomason uh, from Advisor Perspectives, and I'm, I love Joe Thomason stuff. He lives in Maine, or he used to live in Maine. Let's see. He, I think he moved to England. Does he still live in Maine? Uh, he previously ran, but now resides in West Yorkshire, England, wherever that is. Yorkshire pudding. Anyway, um, he does, I think a lot of people are making a mistake. They're looking at the safe withdrawal rates. Let's see where this guy's trying to go. Where are you trying to go? Under the context of the 1966 to 1982 time frame which is the inflationary years under Nixon and Carter. I you say, uh, what's the name too? Lyndon Johnson as well, but mostly Nixon. Nixon is the, uh, the, the reason for the inflationary economy from the, the late 60s into mid 70s, for sure. I mean, Carter actually deregulated a lot of stuff, which helped stem some inflation, but uh, be it as it may, uh, Carter, for some reason, goes down to infamy. Well, Nixon, uh, for some reason, the right has taken... Nixon as our as as our hill to die on. I don't understand that. Be, be as it may. Um, but I, I just I'm sitting there thinking, I, I get it, you know, Joe, um, you know, and everybody else, you're looking at your safe withdrawal rates, looking at the time from nineteen sixty six as our what happened if we retired in nineteen sixty six, which is the worst time to retire because inflation and uh poor returns, net net of inflation. I get that, but that's not what we're dealing with. It's just not. So what I did is there you go. It's that guy. So I said, let's look at some research on the uh, on the well, not Wellington, on the S and P five hundred uh, relative to deflationary times. And I'm going to go back to 1870, and we're going to use the stuff uh, directly from the Schiller uh, stuff you get at Yale. All right. So from let me just show you what I'm talking about here. All right. So I got a lot going on here. Been working on this this morning. In 1871, and we're going to go 1871 through 1900. So that's 30 years uh, of, of, in, of time. All right, 1871 through uh, uh, 1900. We're going to do some. We're going to do average. Let's average up these guys. So let me pause real quick, and I'll do that. Right, so from 1871 through 1900, uh, we had an average annual inflation of negative 1.45. All right? negative 1.45 and so what i've done here is i said okay we're going to take a dollar bill a dollar and we're going to do s p 500 just a second we're going to take a dollar we're going to say it's worth a dollar in year one uh, then we have negative inflation so deflation is 6.87 in year so at the end of year one is worth a dollar and seven in purchasing power and then we're just going to compound these so in years uh, I don't know, what's this? 1876. That one dollar you had in year one can buy you a dollar twenty-one worth of goods now. Hold on, just a second. A little chuckles is trying to get out the door again. Wait. Oh, hold on, let me pause this. He's getting into something. Chuckles, a dog there is uh, getting into stuff in the trash can. All right. So again, so you have your dollar in 1871, uh, and you just let deflation run its course. That one dollar could buy a dollar twenty-one worth of goods. What's that? Six years later, or something like that. So what could it buy at the end of 19, at the beginning, uh, at the end of the time frame at 1900? Oh, buddy, geez, at least it could buy a dollar 53 worth of goods. So deflation gave you a 50% increase in your purchasing power, if that makes sense, on that dollar bill that you had. Does it make you happy, Chuckles? Probably wanted to tell me about deflation. Are you, how much did dog food cost back then? All right, so you have an, uh, an annualized return of negative 1.45 in terms of the rate of inflation again deflation which meant that the dollar bill you had in 1871 could purchase you a dollar 53 worth of goods uh, 30 years later 
it's a pretty good rate of return if you ask me. I mean, you're not making a ton, but you're not losing money, that's for sure. All right, now let's look at the S&P 500. And see, this is always a, it's always a challenge. Well, I'll talk about that in a different video. You had hundred thousand dollars. Oh my goodness, no one had a hundred thousand dollars back then. You could say it's a thousand bucks, you could say it's a buck. I don't care. We're just using a hundred thousand dollars. I I I'm stunned how many people don't get the percentages. Uh they look at the dollar bill like, how could you say someone had a hundred thousand bucks? They'd own the whole world. <sighs> you then divide it by a thousand, man. I, it doesn't matter. It's just saying if you had a hundred thousand bucks, you would have this amount left. If you had a buck, you'd have this amount left. It's all the percentages are, are all that matters. The actual dollar amount is not what matters. It's the percentages. Ah, it's one of the most frustrating things I have on commentators when they say, Yeah, no one had a hundred thousand bucks. All right, so anyway. So in 1871, the mark is rough 15.64. Net of inflation, because of deflation, you actually had a real return of 15.7. Uh, I hope that makes sense because what we're doing here is we're saying. You took your hundred thousand dollars. You had a, a, a gross return of fifteen point six four, but a real return after inflation of fifteen point seven zero eight seven, which meant you had at the end of the day purchasing power of one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Hope that makes sense. All right, so now we go down. We say in eighteen seventy six, the markets fell uh, by fourteen point one five percent, but because we had a deflation of 1876 of 2.7%, yeah, 2.7, 2.73%, we actually only lost 14.12 in terms of total purchasing power. So we fell, uh, we had $138,000 at the end of year 1875. Uh, then we got hit with a 14.1% S&P to 500 decline, but we actually only fell 14.12 because of deflation. Uh, the following year, 1877, uh, was the same thing. So we were down 1.06 in the S&P 500, but there was what, roughly 2% of deflation, so we're only down 1.04, or we're down 1.04%, uh, uh, all right? So then the following year up 16, the following year up 49, there was no inflation in 1879. Um, so the whole point is you can go down here, you can run your own numbers on this if you want, 1883, 1884, we're down. 1885, we're up. And, you know, 1887, we're down. I mean, look at all these. We had lots of pos positive years here. Let me go back right. Oops, I keep going the wrong way. Right here. Uh, until finally, and sorry about that, guys. In 18, 1900, we had $754,000 in the S&P 500. So $100,000 is worth seven times what it was uh, back then. And so if you if you only had 1000 bucks, well, we just divide by 1000 So $100,000 divided by 1000 gives us 100 bucks. So 100 bucks times 7.54, we have $754 for you, um, if that makes sense. So basically what happens is in two, 1990, 1900, we had uh, a little bit of inflation. How much inflation do we have? 1.2% inflation. And so we had 20.84 uh, was our gross return, but we did lose 1.2% for inflation. So we're down to 20.82 uh, as our gross return. And we ended up with 754,000. So, I mean, look at that. So you, I don't even know what, seven times is quintupled, uh, whatever, seven septempled, sep. <laughs> Sep sepultured? I don't know what it is. We start with 100000 bucks. You ended with $700,000 in the S&P 500. On top of that, your dollar that you had in the uh, in the cash was worth $1.53 uh, of purchasing power. So that was actually a wonderful time to be an investor in cash and in uh, S&P 500 as well. Isn't that interesting? Let's look at the 10 year. I wonder if we can see. I haven't looked at that. I'm just going off on a tangent here. 10-year treasury. Let's see if it goes where I go back to. Yeah, I don't know how far back that goes off my top of my head. I don't know. But um, I have to look at the 10 years. Let's see, I don't think it gives us that. Hold on a sec. I thought I had this someplace, but real returns right here. S&P 10-year treasury. Yeah, well, there's a 10-year treasury. And there you go, man. So the 10-year, look at that. The ten, Oh, right. I already did this. All right, sweet. The 10-year treasury was a 5.32 net of inflation. So the 10-year treasury is kicking butt and taking names too, man. 
Look at that. Yikes. Look at that. The 10 year treasury was worth $481,000 because of deflation. But the yield on the 10 year treasury isn't what we're getting now. So I don't know what to uh, take. Uh, I, so look at the yield that you're getting on the 10 year treasury. It's five, five, four, three. Uh, we're not getting anywhere near that now. Um, so I would avoid the 10 year just because you're not getting those kind of yields. I mean, back then you were getting significant yields there. I would not touch the 10 year treasury to save my life because you're not getting 5.32. You're not getting anywhere near 3.45. Last I saw the 10 year treasury is 60 basis points. And again, a basis point is one one hundredth of 1%. So 60 basis points means it's 0.62%. So let's take a look at what the 10 year is doing now. Uh, yeah, well, 0.54. So you're not getting anywhere near this right here. And even if you had 3% inflation, that's still, I mean, that's a, a deflation. That's still a positive rate of return, but I don't think it's worth the risk. Anyway, be that as it may, the 10-year did quite well back then, but you just can't compare those two. So that's uh, that gives it some hope, in my opinion, to look at what the markets did in deflation, the last major uh, time of deflation. We'll look in uh, the late 30s here to see what that did as well because uh, you know here the stock market did well and the Great Depression did not do well. So we'll take a look at that too next. So hang tight. Thanks.